So it just keeps getting weirder and weirder, this uh, this narrative timeline that we're stuck in. It, it seems the Epstein thing just never seems to go away. The elites are probably really upset about that, I'm sure. Uh, there are many people within different circles, especially I feel like the Democratic Party. You know, it seems to be mostly the Clinton types, the Podesta types, Gates. Trump was also on Epstein's little black book list, but... You know, uh, conservatives will conveniently forget about that. But anyway, it is pretty interesting what we have here. Judge who okayed Mar-a-Lago raid is Obama donor and linked to De Jeffrey Epstein. Not only linked to Jeffrey Epstein, this judge. And, of course, we're talking about the Trump raid, which happened yesterday. And I did a whole video on it already. If you haven't seen it, check it out in the description below. Um, he was the lawyer for Jeffrey Epstein's associates in defending them against the child sex trafficking charges back uh, about a decade, decade and a half ago now uh, during the whole settlement process, which initially occurred. And now he is a judge and he is the judge that signed off on the Trump Mar-a-Lago raid. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I mean... Right off the bat, you look at this and you think conspiracy. I mean, that's what I think. I think conspiracy, right? Because I'm a tinfoil hat wearing critical thinker with a mind of my own that doesn't necessarily trust known liars in the media. Now, that being said, um, what's the first thing that comes to mind? I'm going to read this article, of course, in, in just a second. But what's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, uh, the Biden administration is, of course, using the DOJ and, well the FBI as a sort of NKVD Gestapo type of tyrannical police force, domestic police force to go after his political opponents, Donald Trump, the likely and obvious pretty much confirmed contender uh, against the Democrats for the 2024 presidential election. Uh, he's de facto already announced that he is running. Of course, he can't officially announce it for like tax or, or, or campaign funding purposes or something. Uh, 24 months, something like that. So he hasn't officially announced it, but he's de facto announced it. And and he's going to be the one running against the, de the Democrats. And the Democrats, uh, and I'll show you Biden's press secretary actually saying this, which I don't necessarily believe it, but they do plan on running Biden against whoever the Republican contender is. Um, so it's going to be Biden versus Trump. And Biden, uh, or at least his handlers, I should say, know, know this. And they're uh, using the FBI to go after Trump. Now, the conspiracy here, um, well... The fact that, I mean, <laughs> look, I'm not going to go too far into the Hunter Biden thing, but uh, apparently when that recent uh, 4chan hack occurred into Hunter Biden's iPhone cloud, there was a lot more bad stuff going around the internet uh, of Hunter Biden with hookers and stuff like that uh and, and some of them were alleged to have been underage and all that and you know that was all sweeped under the rug because the media doesn't want people knowing about the the crimes of the biden family and hunter biden and his debauchery it goes much further than just drug use it, it goes into the depths of of degeneracy so um you know Considering that, considering the fact that, you know, the Clintons were well known to have gone on the Lolita Express with Jeffrey Epstein and people like Bill Gates and, you know, the John Podesta, the whole pizza thing that occurred in 2016. I don't want to say the exact words because, you know, that'll probably get me shadow banned, you know what I'm saying, on the YouTube's AI. So uh, for those of you that follow my channel, you know what I'm getting at here. So, the Biden administration raiding Trump for documents he allegedly stole or kept for himself when he left the presidency in 2021. And they're trying to now get those documents. What could those documents be about? You know? 
What could those documents be about? Hmm, let's see. I don't know. Maybe Trump is using it as leverage uh, against the people in power uh, because some of those documents were in relation to Epstein and potentially his, uh, his, his ring of, of blackmail that he had on so many politicians in the U.S. and so many media pundits and so many big billionaire moguls, which is essentially a Mossad operation, the whole Epstein thing. You know, so it's just a, a, a hypothesis. I have no evidence to, to support that this is what the documents were that Trump had. Uh, nobody does, but it's okay to speculate because that's what we do. We're human beings. We speculate. It's okay. We can speculate, right? As long as we're very clear on that and that we're speculating on that. Now, it just, it, you know, these things line up to, in that way. Um, so I don't think it's unreasonable to have a hunch that that's the case. That's all I'm saying. So, you know, that being said, um, I do have several videos up on uh, BitChute because I had to delete all my videos on YouTube because of, you know, YouTube censoring me and all that. Three strikes almost. I almost got the channel deleted like a hundred times. Uh, I've come this close like a hundred times to getting this channel delete deleted. Um, but all of, uh, not all, but some of my, most of my work since about 2016 is up on BitChute. You can find a whole plethora of videos if you're just typing resist in the reset Epstein. And notably, one I made that... Uh, probably should get more notice um than it does uh the the shocking truth about who killed jeffrey epstein um yeah I, I mean i don't even remember fully what that video was about because i put so much information into it but i do remember it being very very uh thorough and it involving and showing how you know robert maxwell and his links to a Mossad uh, and, and, you know, G Ghislaine Maxwell, that's, you know, Robert Maxwell's daughter, um, obviously running the whole ring with Epstein and the blackmail and the tapes that, you know, and the lists and everything that Epstein had on pow powerful people. It was a blackmail ring. And th this, of course, a lot of people know, but not everyone does. So let's read this article. Judge who okayed Mar-a-Lago raid. Obama donor once linked to Jeffrey Epstein. Hmm. Hmm. The Florida federal magistrate judge who signed off on a search warrant authorizing the FBI raid of former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort donated to Barack Obama's 2008 presidential campaign months after he left the local U.S. attorney's office to rep employees of convicted, you know, what, Jeffrey Epstein, who had received immunity in a long-running sex trafficking investigation of the financier. Sources tell the Post that the judge, uh, that Judge Bruce Reinhardt approved the warrant that enabled federal agents to converge on the uh, palatial uh, South Florida state on Monday in what Trump called an unannounced raid on my home. You know, it's pretty funny. I was telling my buddy about how, like, you know, this unannounced raid, quote unquote, was probably just the FBI dressed in, you know, suits, very, very calmly knocking on his door, ringing the, the bell at his gate saying, we have a warrant, sir. And like, you know, I don't think it was like guns blazing. A lot of people picture stuff like that. They're just ignorant. Um, maybe, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Trump's secret service was like shooting it out with them, you know? Um, I doubt it. <laughs> Reinhardt, Reinhardt was elevated to magistrate judge in March 2018 after 10 years in private practice. That November, the Miami Herald reported that he had represented several of Epstein's employees, including, by Reinhardt's own admission to the outlet, Epstein's pilots, his scheduler, Sarah Kellen, and Nadia Markonkova, Markonkova, Marsonkova? Nadia Marsonkova, who Epstein once reportedly described as his Yugoslavian sex slave. Oof. Kellen and Mar Mar Markakova uh, once uh, were among Epstein's lieutenants who were granted immunity as part of a controversial 2007 deal with federal prosecutors that allowed the pervert to plead guilty to state charges rather than federal crimes. 
Epstein wound up serving just 13 months in county jail and was granted work release. According to the Herald, which cited court documents, Reinhard resigned from the South Florida U.S. Attorney's Office effective on New Year's Day 2008 and went to work for Epstein's cohorts the following day. Epstein, who, had, who was found dead in August 2019 of an apparent suicide in the Manhattan Correctional Center, while awaiting trial on federal sex trafficking charges, had hired a stable uh, of high-powered lawyers for his defense in the late 2000s, including former independent counsel Kenneth Starr. Ten months later, after starting work on Ep uh, for Epstein's co-conspirators, according to Federal Election Commission records, Reinhardt gave $1,000 directly to the Obama, Obama, Obama campaign and another $1,000 to its fundraising arm, the Obama Victory Fund. Uh, though the records show that the judge made mostly uh, small, small uh, I can't talk today small dollar donations to his law firm's political action committee in subsequent years. Reinhardt also donated $500 to Jeb Bush's 2016 presidential campaign in November 2015. <laughs> Jeb Bush's campaign in, in November. So he was, he was the one um, obviously running against Trump in the Republican primary during that time. I remember that time. I would cover the whole thing. I thought it, I mean, that was very entertaining. I remember when Trump, I'll never forget when he just called uh, Jeb Bush weak. And he, he was like, he's so weak. He's so pathetic. He's so soft. Look at him. Something like that. I don't know. It, it was It was like a big meme at the time where he just stuck it to Jeb Bush and totally emasculated him in front of the entire Republican audience during the primary. It was, uh, it was, it was entertaining. Let's just put it that way. Um, Reinhardt was later named a civil lawsuit in a civil lawsuit by two of Epstein's victims that accuse him of violating justice department policies by switching sides in the middle of the Epstein investigation, suggesting that he had spilled inside information about the, probe to build favor with the notorious defendant the herald reported in 2018 in a 2011 affidavit uh reinhardt denied that he had done anything improper and insisted that uh, since he was not involved in the federal investigation of epstein he was not privy to inside information about the case however in a 2013 court filing reinhardt's former colleagues contradicted him saying that he had learned confidential non-public information about the epstein matter while employed by the U.S. Attorney's Office. Reinhardt noted that the Herald, in response that, uh, that a complaint filed against him by a lawyer for Epstein's victims had been dismissed by the Justice Department, as recently as January 2015, Reinhardt was asked to appear on right-wing channel Newsmax to give analysis on the Epstein fallout, but declined to publicly note his own role in the case. You see, it's a revolving door. It's controlled opposition. It's it's like a Hegelian dialectic. You got you got the Epstein crowd that's being charged by the very people, uh, by the very groups um, that they're in bed with, essentially. <laughs> you know, um, and and it really is like a revolving door. It's like a joke. Like when I remember back in like two thousand seven, eight, nine, when I first found it. I think it was probably two thousand nine when I first found out about this Epstein situation about how there was a settlement and he was only served 13 months for a sex trafficking ring and the Lolita Express and billionaires and nobody knew about it for like 10 years and like nobody talked about it I remember Alex Jones was talking about it and it was like there was all kinds of people talking about it but it was very low key and it was not publicized even though it was like explosive news like, like, just uh, like, a, uh, like a smoking gun evidence of the new world order, like corruption and debauchery and Satanism and and, and all of this, um, just there for years and years and years with nobody really talking about it. And like, I knew about it, others did, and you know, I would talk about it all the time. I remember I made a video in like 2014 about how Prince Andrew was it, Prince Andrew. They're still talking about it even um, to this day. They're, they're like literally 10 years late to, to, to the story. But um, I think it's Prince Andrew. Um, uh, his involvement in the whole thing. And, 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 you know, it's the royal family. It's Mossad. It's uh, billionaires in the U.S., uh, the Democratic Party, uh, even some Republicans. you got Dershowitz involved. 
all of these guys. And apparently Reinhardt, this guy who ordered the raid on Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence, he's now a judge. He was he was the attorney for Epstein's cohorts in these child sex trafficking charges. Bailed a lot of them out. Helped a lot of them out. Real 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 legacy he has. Real good guy. Um before entering private practice in 2008, that's joining the cohorts of Epstein, Reinhardt spent 12 years as a federal prosecutor. According to an official biography circulated at the time, he was hired as a magistrate judge. Reinhardt, quote, managed a docket that covered the full spectrum of federal crimes, including narcotics, violent cri- crimes, public corruption, <laughs> and that damn near poetic. Financial frauds and child abuse and immigration. Of course, I don't even know. This is just, this will probably get shadow banned either way, but I'm trying to tr- try my best. You know, child, you know what? Child bad stuff. Abhorrent images and videos and, well, you know, all kinds of creepy stuff, whatever. Um... So that's what he was in charge of. Hmm. And then he wor- went to work for Epstein. Look at that. And now he's back in charge, g- g- giving out warrants or whatever. <laughs> okay, for the district federal courts. Yeah, this is called uh, corruption. This is what this is called. It's called corruption, all right? Man, that's what it's called, man. You know? call, me, call me a conspiracy theorist. I'm just a simple guy on the internet. I don't know much, you know? I have a bachelor's degree in finance. That's all I know, right? Um, I've seen a thing or two in my life, but I would say this is com- corruption. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not like super, super expert, big brain IQ of a billion, but I can tell you this is corruption. I can tell you this is corruption. Um. Anyways, uh, Reinhardt is one of the three federal magistrate judges in the West Palm Beach offices of the U.S. District Court for the Southern District Court of Florida, along with William Matthewman and Ryan McCabe. Two recent warrant a- applications were assigned to Reinhardt and entered into the court system on Monday, the Miami Herald reported, but those warrants and information about who they targeted remain sealed. Records show that another warrant was issued by Reinhardt on Friday, but its uh, contents were also sealed. Really interesting because, uh, you know, it could have been, one of those could have been um, this Freedom Caucus Congressman Scott Perry because the FBI sees his cell phone one a day after Mar-a-Lago. So I have, a, I have a feeling some of these at this article is discussing these warrants that were sealed. One of them is that congressman. And we'll talk about that in a second. Trump confirmed media reports of a raid at his Florida resort on Monday evening saying Mar-a-Lago was under siege, raided, and occupied by a large group of FBI agents. Now, I could be wrong, but, I, you know, I love how Trump plays this up when I really do. I, I, I mean, I could be wrong. I really, like, I haven't, I've looked at some of the video of after people showed up to Mar-a-Lago, some Trump supporters, but I don't know if there's video. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was just the FBI just knocking on his door. Right, right. But he he, go, he he like frames it as quote under siege, raided, and occupied, like like it's a war, you know. So so I know I have a lot of people I've seen in the comments, and I always read the comments. A lot of people thinking this is all you know staged, right? That Trump's in on it too, or something. Well, I mean, when he's playing things up like this, it does uh, make me wonder. Like you know, he he's using language that. Uh, uh, speaks to this idea that this is a civil war, but, you know, maybe it really is a civil war, too. You know, I mean, it's not like... It's just a different type of war. It's like fourth-generational, fifth-generational warfare with, with, you know, a war of influence, a war of um, cyber attacks and propaganda and manipulation and algorithms, right? Um, And, you know, so maybe it's apt... To be using that type of language, even if they are just knocking at the door, and this is to raid some documents that he had. Maybe he's using those documents for something they don't like. 
Maybe he's using it as leverage against his political opponent, opponents as well. Maybe it's Epstein documents. The judges were reportedly searching the seaside property for boxes of classified documents Trump allegedly brought to the ritzy resort after he left the White House in January 2021, which would be a violation of federal record-keeping laws. The exact same thing Hillary Clinton did, right? The exact same thing. She didn't get raided, of course. But yes, she bleach-bitted the hard drive and... um. And, and smash it with a hammer. So, uh, the National Archive—I mean, literally—it's <laughs> just like what? Uh, the National Archives, um, blah blah blah, and Records Administration said in February that it found classified documents in 15 boxes at Mar-a-Lago and alerted the FBI. Um, the removal of the classified documents to unauthorized locations is banned under federal law. Although Trump had wide powers when he was president to declassify documents, the raid on Mar-a-Lago comes as the uh, House Select Committee's continuing investigation into Trump's role in the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol as Congress met to certify the 2020 presidential election results. So... Check this out. So, so let me know what you think about that. I mean, just let me know what you think. That's it. That's all I have to say. Because, yeah, I mean, we can speculate all day, but I'm sure more, more information will come out. Maybe maybe we'll be able to uh, follow the breadcrumbs, put the pieces together. Maybe uh, Q will start posting again and tell us all about what's really going on. You know? What was it? Uh, follow the breadcrumbs. Um, what was some of the other Q uh, phrases? Uh um, trust the plan. Trust the plan, guys. Trust the plan. That's it. <laughs> Psyop. <laughs> Psyop. Um, yeah, Q is definitely a Psyop. Now, now, when it comes to this, I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. You know, we'll see how if it's being used to take away your freedoms, it's a Psyop. If it's if, if it's not, if it's it, you know, then it's not. I mean, that's that's the way I put it. Like uh, my buddy, my buddy Gordy's like, Nah, man, this is a Psyop, bro. This is a Psyop. I'm like, well. Okay, like describe to me exactly what it's going to be used for, you know, because you know you have to you have to connect those dots for me, bro. Anyways, um, uh, Biden's press secretary grilled on White House's weaponizing of the DOJ and FBI against political opponents. Check out this video of the press secretary. I can never say her name. I don't care about her name. Oh, Jean Pierre, Jean Pierre. The um, she does a really good job. And we know this because, I mean, just she, you know, she has melanin and she uh, enjoys things in the bedroom that the average woman doesn't enjoy, like other women, right? right? So this is why we know she's fit for the job. So anyways, let's check this out. Thanks, Green. Thanks, Green. Do you consider Donald Trump to be a political rival of President Biden? I'm not going to speak to that from here. But you talk about Trump all the time. So do you consider him to be... I don't, I don't talk about Trump all the time. Ultra MAGA, you guys were criticizing his handling of COVID last... <laughs> oh my goodness, can you... <laughs> uh, uh, um, I'm not going to... I'm not going to talk about that right now. Uh, uh, like, how rude. That's just so rude. Like, really. Very unprofessional. And almost like um, arrogant. It's not even arrogant. It's like faux arrogance. Like if you're going to be arrogant, at least be authentically arrogant. It's like her trying to pretend she's being arrogant. And this is that thing about her. And I've I've seen a few people describe this about Jean-Pierre. She, she makes all these like elaborate hand gestures when she's lying and she's fit it's like it's like this like um it's like a, a like a mimicky political fakery in which you, you could see in her spirit she doesn't believe anything she's saying but she's trying to make it look like what she's saying is 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 confident and and, and like meaningful and authentic and she uses her hands a lot and she and she like tries to play it up like she's not flustered and has no clue what she's doing by like over exaggerating her body language 
and I don't know. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. It's kind of hard to put into words. She does it a little bit here. This is more like a pity back and forth you'll see. This reporter puts her on the hot seat big time, but there's other clips where she does this even more, this this sort of political mimery of fake confidence lies in lying. Yeah, anyway. Him to be. I don't, I don't talk about Trump all the time. Ultra MAGA, you guys were criticizing his handling of COVID last week. Yeah. You've mentioned his January 6th response a couple days and, ago. No. So can you say, based on all that, I, I didn't say anything about Mark. <laughs> I'm just asking you if you consider the president. I'm, to I'm able- saying from here, I'm not going to comment on that. Does the president still want to uh, think that he would be very fortunate to run against Trump in 2024, like he has said before? Again, I'm not going to comment it's on. Just, it's just I'm a not. Quote from I'm, the president. In the next election, I'd be very fortunate if I had that same man running against me. Does he still? All think I can that? tell you, Peter, is that the president intends to run in 2024. Is there a concern here that if you guys don't say more? than these Republicans who are accusing this White House of weaponizing the Justice Department, weaponizing the FBI, are that's going to become the, the public sentiment. If you guys don't say once and for all, we are not doing that. First, first of all, we're just not going to comment on the Department of Justice investigation. Okay, we're just we're just yeah. not going to comment are, on is that. Is this White House weaponizing the Justice Department and the FBI against, against political opponents? The president has been very clear uh, from before he was elected, very clear on this. Hold on. It's Throughout just, his time in now. office. I, I heard the quote. We will be playing the quote tonight at 6 o'clock. Is this administration weaponizing the Justice Department and the FBI against political opponents? Peter, the president believes in the rule of law. The president believes in the independence of the D- Department that's, of that's Justice. The- you know what I hate about this? You know these people. People who are in the White House press room who are allowed to be in there, like Peter, I forget this guy's name. I think he's the Fox News guy, whatever his name is. Uh, You know, you've seen him in a million of these, right? He always asks the tough questions. You know that he is like probably going out to dinner with her and, and like other people. Not not romantically, but I mean like, you know, it, they're, they're all getting drinks after this. You know what I mean? This is all like kind of like a charade, you know? And this is how it really goes, you know? It really... It, it, look, I'm not even saying that... It's almost, it's almost like, um, you know, it's like this weird um like agreement that we're, we're not going to totally, totally screw each other over. But we'll hold each other's feet to the fire and you know it's like friendly competition it's peter Ducey. friendly competition you know a little friendly competition in front of the cameras and then we'll go out for drinks after you know um i don't know that's that's the way i i see it like it's like this weird relationship that they have um at least that's what i've heard that's what i've heard yes or no just no, is that is House. no. It's a yes or a no for you. I'm answering the question. You may not like it, but I'm answering the question, I'm just, and I'm no, no. I'm answering the question, and I'm telling you that we are not going to comment on a criminal investigation. The president has been very clear. I laid out what his thoughts were back on January 7th in 2021 about how he saw the Department of Justice. And I'm just going to leave it there. We're not going to comment from here. So just to clarify, long story short, Peter Ducey said, is the president, is Joe Biden, his administration weaponizing the FBI and DOJ to go after his political opponents? Yes or no? I'm not going to answer that question. So that was that, right? So this is flagrant tyranny, right? And and so, like, they just straight up say, like, eh, you know, I plead the fifth. That's kind of like what she's saying here. I plead the fifth. I'm not going to answer that question. You can't, she, she can't say no because she knows it's, it's true. If it weren't true, what would be the downside in PR terms of her just saying, no, of course not? Of course not. There's a good reason why we're raiding Trump. And it has to do with, I mean, it seems so weird, right? Like, 
Like if you uh, if you're a normie and you follow like the mainstream narrative of everything, they're raiding Trump over do- like a box of documents he stole. Like since when do they even keep documents on paper anymore? What is this? This doesn't even make sense. Uh, and they're being they're being vague about it. Like we don't know what these documents are. It's like well, wait a minute, but these people are up there every single day calling Trump literally Hitler in the mainstream media, um, and the corporate press. And the Democratic Party and the Biden regime themselves directly from the horse's mouth saying all these things, calling them a basket of deplorables and everything. And, and so, you know, you, you see all this and it's like, oh, oh gosh, yeah, it's just over some documents he took. What, wait a minute. What? In relation to what? Like, what are these like secret UFO documents? Like, what are these documents? Like, tell me, tell me what, what the danger is. What is the national security threat here? I, I mean, is there really like it's almost like like you, you, they they get they got what's his name on tax evasion or like Al Capone it's like what was the real reason they went after him though the real reason they went after Al Capone was because he was like peddling uh, booze illegally during per- prohibition and he was running like armies of, of mob goons right and going around killing people committing murder mass murder right right um gang violence gang wars extortion all this right so uh you know it seems like maybe they're after trump for something other than like some menial box of documents i mean does anyone really believe that like even if you're a normie don't you think there's an ulterior motive here even if you're not going to go on to say that you know it's corruption and you know banana republic style you know, NKVD, uh, you know, um, tyranny. Um, wouldn't you at least think that maybe there's something else going on it's instead of like a, a box of papers, really? Box of papers? <laughs> yeah, break. Um, Andrew Como. The DOJ must immediately explain the reason for its raid, and it must be more than a search for inconsequential archives or it will be viewed as a political tactic and undermine any future credible investigation and in legitimacy of January 6th investigations. So you can see, uh, and this, is, this, this makes me kind of skeptical of the whole thing, um, when I see Como, total shill. But then again, Como, this is the thing. And, and when the system attacks you because he was ousted from his governorship um, in New York replaced by Hochul they're both just total swamp monster creatures awful awful human beings but you know they said that he was uh, you know um, engaging in sexual misconduct and stuff but what that really was about and I made you know several shows about this um, they were going to go after him and charges were going to be brought in lawsuits for what happened during COVID where he put sick people in nursing homes and killed way more people than needed to be um, negligently resulted in people dying, old people and all this, and, and it's spreading. Some people even go on to say it was on purpose. Like, why would you do that? It had to have been on purpose. You can't be that stupid. So th- this was heating up, and then all of a sudden, oh, look, sexual misconduct. I gotta go. Then the heat suddenly came off Andrew Como. But at the same time, now here he is, probably scared that the um, next person in power, maybe Trump, um, will use the FBI against him for doing what he did in New York when he was governor during COVID to all those people who died in nursing homes and stuff. So so he's probably like, well, I got to speak out against this in general because this could be used against me in the future. And, and he, he's also like, well, I might as well. The swamp already came after me uh, because I, I became inconven- an inconvenient risk to the narrative. <laughs> so I might as well just say it. Anyways, we got this here. Trump ally rep Scott Perry says the FBI seized his cell phone one day after Mar-a-Lago raid. So this is interesting. Like I was reading in that uh, New York Post article, there were other sealed warrants that were issued by the, the U.S. district judges at, you know, at the same time when this Trump raid occurred. And this is likely one of them. Uh, Republican Rep. 
Scott Perry of Pennsylvania says that the FBI uh, has confiscated his cell phone. Perry, in an exclusive statement, told Fox News on Tuesday that while traveling with his family earlier in the day, he was approached by three FBI FBI agents who handled who handed him a warrant and requested that he turn over his cell phone. Wow, the confiscation of of the congressman's personal phone comes one day after the FBI agent searched former President Trump's estate. Um, this morning, while traveling with my family, three FBI agents visited me and seized my cell phone. They made no attempt to contact my lawyer, who would have made arrangements for them to have my phone if that was their wish. I'm outraged, though not surprised, that the FBI, under the direction of Merrick Garland, uh, would seize the phone of a sitting member of Congress. Perry said in a statement, my phone contains info about my legislative and political activities and personal private discussions with my wife, family, constituents, and friends. None of this is the government's business. So now they have a plethora of things. They'll probably, you know, maybe get some sort of blackmail on him or just use it and or just figure out what he's up to. He's, he's a representative in Pennsylvania. Very, very influential state when it comes to U.S. political elections the presidential election Pennsylvania is like it's sort of like the the, uh, the what do you call it the cornerstone or the key what do they call it the uh, uh, there's a word for it um, the, the philosopher's key or whatever I don't know um, so very very creepy stuff they're very very creepy stuff like we really are like this is a um, a purge it's like a purge uh, Perry asserted that in his statement, you know, it's really kind of funny. It just kind of popped in my head. All these Q people talking about how Trump, while he was in office, he was going to do exactly what the Democrats are doing to him right now. Oh, there's going to be mass arrests. They're going to go raiding people's, you know, estates. Um, they're going to go after the Democrats, the Clintons, you know, all these people. And, and before Epstein was, you know, in jail, we're gonna go after Epstein. We're gonna go after all the swamp monsters, and we're gonna raid their homes and get their phones and get warrants and indictments. And nothing happened, did it? But here, the Democrats are ready and willing to wield power, and that's the problem with the right here in this country. They don't want to be perceived as quote unquote literally Hitler, so they won't wield power in an appropriate way. You see, wielding power and doing it appropriately and effectively and boldly can be a vehicle to create an environment that actually enables personal liberty even more and individual freedom. For instance, if Trump right out did something to at least advocate or, or um, I, I don't know if he could do this with executive order, but maybe bolster the um, legislative branch or maybe even an executive order just banning mask mandates or something or, or you know, banning vaccine mandates nationwide in, the, in this country, um, you know, th- that would be an appropriate way to wield power as, as like a conservative libertarian in pre, as president or whatever, or to, um, you know, um, do exactly what the Democrats are doing, except to the bad guys, right? Except to the people who are corrupt, you know, the, the creepy Lolita express, you know, <laughs> um, trafficking rings and stuff. Uh, da, 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 da. So, yeah. Perry has been a target of interest of the Democratic-dominated uh, January 6th House Select Committee that is investigating the deadly 2020, 2020, 2020 one, uh, attack uh, on the Capitol by right-wing extremists and other Trump supporters who aim to disrupt the congressional certification of Biden's electoral um, college victory. Perry was in communication numerous times with the Trump White House in the days and weeks ahead of the storming of the Capitol. Trump announced on Monday that the Florida residence has been raided by the FBI. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so this is this is where this is heading. Um, you know, it, 
maybe this is uh, in, in some ways about January 6th. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they'll come out and they'll say, or they'll, maybe they'll plant stuff on, on, you know, on Trump or on this guy's phone, uh, Scott Perry's phone, um, it, saying that they collaborated and planned January 6th and wanted it to be violent and some sort of insurrection. Who knows? That's possible. Um, or it could be what I said earlier, some sort of Epstein-linked conspiracy. Who knows? Or this could be just a way to, you know, you know, get something going. Something. Maybe, you know, whether it's planting something or something legitimate, get something going to indict Trump and get him in court so that he can't run in 2024 um, against Biden. Uh, and, 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 you know, so that situation doesn't happen because... You know, Trump would probably win if, of course, the election is fair and square. That's a whole nother can of worms, but maybe they're thinking it would be such a landslide that they wouldn't be able to pull any, you know, strange stuff. Um, and, and so they have to do this. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe. So that being said, let me know what you guys think about this. Really interesting timeline we're in. You know, we're kind of wearing the... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the strange times, 2020s. Okay, the new world order. Uh, we're fighting them. The Great Reset. We're going at them full force here at Resisting the Reset. And if you believe in my work, you can become a Patreon member or contribute with PayPal or you know the crypto links. I have crypto wallet links in the description below for Litecoin, Bitcoin, stuff like that. If you want to contribute. Other than that, just like and subscribe and drop a comment below. Share this video far and wide. Follow me on Twitter and Gab. And uh, bitch you, Odyssey, Rumble, etc. All the alternative platforms. Very important in case we get censored here. It's been press. Keep your head up. Stay real. And no fear.